this morning to you who are uh, viewing us live on Facebook. Amen. I have come to the realization that this may be my last time to worship God. So I'm going to give him all that I can on today. Who wants to join me in giving God all that we have on today? Amen. Come on, Chad. Give us one another. And I'll be back right back with a word of prayer. Amen. 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 The Lord, one more time. Can we give God a hand and praise just for being who he is, for being an offer and finisher of our faith? We thank you, Lord, for being who you are. Truly, every praise belongs to you this morning. Come on. If you're able to, can we sing a song together? And every praise is to our God. Come on and clap your hands. If you're at home, if you're here at the service, wherever you are, just clap your hands.
in which we live. People are overwhelmed not only by the coronavirus, we have lost over 2,218,000 uh, Americans in this pandemic. We, we have a president who knew about this deadly disease since February. He said that he did not want to panic the American people. So he didn't tweet. He didn't call one of these super COVID spreading rabbits to announce this deadly virus. He just remained silent. You, you, you know President Farrell, a.k.a. Donald Trump. And so we are living in a society where we are overwhelmed by what this pandemic has done in the lives of many. Many people are overwhelmed because they lost loved ones to this death of God. Many are overwhelmed because they lost jobs to this virus. Many are overwhelmed because they lost businesses in this virus. Many are overwhelmed because their bank accounts have dwindled in this virus. But then many are overwhelmed because they have overspent and have overdrawn their checking account. Many are overwhelmed because they have overworked themselves. Many are overwhelmed because they have allowed themselves to overvalue the opinions of others. Many are overwhelmed because we have not taken care of our bodies. Therefore, we have allowed ourselves to be overtaken by physical exhaustion. And as a result, we wind up overstressed. How do you overcome the realities of life? We're, we're living in a society where we, we are just overwhelmed by so many things. Yeah, yeah. We, we turn on the TV and look at yeah. the voting lines and we become overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. But I want to tell you, don't turn around. Don't, don't go back home. If, you, if, you, if you're going to vote, stay in the line. And make your vote count for something. Let your vote speak for your voice. Don't, don't be overwhelmed by what's going on in society. Just stay with God. And God will work things out in your life. Well, we, we, we're, 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 we're approaching a passage. I want, I want to try to uh, just thread around the parameters of this little pericope. I just, I just want to look at e Elisha. Uh, because Elisha... Uh, was overwhelmed at one point in his life. You know, Elijah was a protege of Elijah. I mean, Elijah uh, was the one that was handpicked to succeed Elijah. In 1 Kings chapter 1, uh, God had already told Elijah to make Elijah his successor. Now, can you imagine uh, Elijah? Standing in the shoes of an Elijah. I mean, Elijah who uh, who brought back the dead. I mean, Elijah who who walked up to Jezebel uh, and, and and told her that it's not going to rain uh, for three years until I say something. I'm talking about Elijah uh, uh, who who caused a drought uh, in the land of Israel and all the cattle died. And all of the land, all of the livestock, all of the fruit that I'm talking about, Elijah, who went up on Mount Carmel uh, and slew the 450 prophets of, of Baal. I'm talking about Elijah, uh, who, who comes out of nowhere uh, and declares uh, in no uncertain terms that it's not going to rain until I say, and then he gives the benediction and walks off. I'm talking about. Elijah. Elijah uh, was to uh, take the place, be the successor of Elijah. Uh -huh. Now notice, notice, notice Elijah. Elijah had so much 
wait on him. But now notice, notice in chapter 2, uh, when we come to chapter 2, chapter, I mean 2 Kings chapter 2, we notice that Elijah tells Elisha to leave him. Well, in fact, he tells him three times to leave him. Verse 2, verse 4, and verse 6, he tells him to leave him. But Elisha said, as the Lord thy God lived, yeah. and you live, I will not leave you. Yeah. For three times he tells Elijah. In other words, now every day but that, but I ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Amen. He tells me he has to go to Bethlehem, he has to go to Jericho. But I ain't going nowhere. I, I'm going to stay right here with you. Yeah. That's a mighty good thing today. We, 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 ought to, we ought to take something from Elisha, our uh, determination and commitment to, uh, not, not to leave his leader. Yeah, yeah. He said, I'm not going nowhere. And, and so he remains with Elisha. Yeah. And you know, uh, John tells us in the 15th chapter of St. John that if you abide in me and abide in my word, ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. He said, but you got to remain. Mina was the Greek word. You got, you, you, you got to take up residence. You, 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 you got to stay there. So some of us need some staying power. It's easy to stay when everything is going good. It's easy to stay when everything is okie dokie. It's easy to stay when the money uh, is right. It's easy to stay when you got free. It's easy to stay when everything you desire, everything you wanted, everything you've been asking, everything you've been looking for is right at your feet. It's easy to stay. But what happens? When storms come. When fake friends walk off. And then uh Foes come in and try to destroy. What, 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 what do you do? How do you remain? How do you stay right there? But well, in this, in this, in this, in this passage, we we, we have Elijah, who, who name in God is salvation. Uh, Elijah has a major, major task before him. Elijah, as we can see in chapter 4, uh, Elijah has at least five uh, miracles that take place in chapter 4. Uh, he opens up uh, in chapter 4 uh, by, by running into a woman that's overwhelmed. She, she, her husband has died. Her husband was one of the prophets, school of the prophets. And her husband has died and and uh, apparently there was no insurance policy. And she finds herself in dire straits. In fact, it's so bad that the creditors are threatening to take her, her children. And she comes to Elijah completely old way. And she asks Elijah, uh, who was the prophet of that time, what, what, what? What can I, what can you do for me? Yeah. Yeah. Elijah says to her, what do you, what do you have? All right. yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you have? Mm. What, what do you, mm. what do you have? Uh -huh. She said, well, I have a, I have a jar of oil. Yeah. But it seems that she was thinking that that was not enough to take care of her indebtedness. Uh, look, notice Elijah, does, let's look at what he didn't tell her. He did not tell her to go and sell what you have and let's just make things better from that budget. He didn't tell her to make sure that you pour half a cup of oil in the bread. He didn't tell her to just make sure you don't put 
all the oil you need to make the bread taste right. It may not taste the same, but we will allow ourselves to, to go get through with shortcuts. He tells the woman to go borrow as many jars as you possibly can. Yeah. And you have to understand, this, this woman was, she was in debt. Yeah. She, she's sitting here with a jar of oil, and maybe she said, maybe, maybe the prophet didn't understand what I said. Maybe he, maybe he misunderstood what I said. And so she, she adheres and she goes to her neighbors and, and listen, she does some things that many of us wouldn't dare allow ourselves to do. All right. See, we, we live in a society where we don't want anybody to know we need him. We live in a day in a society that we, 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 we rather, we rather sit next to pride and die rather than let somebody know we in need. We, 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 we are people who, who in the midst of a pandemic, we just refuse yeah. to allow anybody to know yeah. that we need him. And so this woman, this, this woman takes out, and listen, she goes to her neighbors and she borrows small jaws, big jaws, tall jaws, round jaws, as many jaws as she possibly can. Uh, yeah. In fact, I would imagine her table looked like a Tupperware party at the house table. All of the jaws on that table. And, and Elijah tells her to pour it oil in the jar. And every time you pour oil in the jar, uh -huh. set it aside. Yeah, yeah. She kept pouring oil yeah, yeah. in the jars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put them aside. Finally, she comes to the very last jar, and, and, and the oil stopped. And she goes back to the man of God. She said, I, I've done exactly what you told me to do. I, I filled all the jars with oil. He said, now take, go and sell what you have. Yeah. Pay off your debt yeah. and live off the rest. Elijah gave her a simple oil. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that runs throughout these four miracles. Just a simple oil. We fail because the order that God gives us is just too simple to find. God, all he said, give a dime out of the that's too simple. So if you give a dime out of the dollar, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There won't be room enough to receive. Say, in fact, I will rebuke the revival for your sake. But for some of us, that's just too simple. That's just too, too simple. But do you not know God gives us simple orders? And he expects us to follow through with simple orders? When he gives us complex orders, we, we stand to the views, baffled and bewildered. Sometimes God just gives us a simple order. A simple order. He gives this woman just a simple, simple order. Go and get as many jars as you possibly can. And fill those jars. And when you're done, Take what you have and set it, pay off your debt, and live off the rest. Now, many of us who have credit cards are overmatched. Well, I, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, the way you find it in the text is. We've overmatched our. Credit cards. In fact, we have overdosed on that. Everything we doubt, if everything we look at, we doubt whether we can do it, whether it can be accomplished or not. But God deals with the impossible. He can make the impossible possible if you trust Him. If you trust Him, He can make the impossible possible. 
So Elijah, uh, Elisha, uh, not, not only does he confront an overwhelmed uh, woman, a widow here in 1 and 7, but, but all down through this fourth chapter, he's dealing with people that are overwhelmed yeah. with situations. Uh, the, 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 the woman who made a, a house, a room for him, she, she's overwhelmed with gratitude. This is an only one that's there. And so he, he, she makes him a room. She, she takes care of the prophet. Yeah. But all down through here, uh, even when he gives the woman a child, and the child dies, the woman is overwhelmed and goes to him and says, listen, I, 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 I didn't ask you for no child. Yeah. And, and, and what, have you, what, what have you done to us? She's overwhelmed by grief. Yeah. And then we go on down where a famine has hit the land. Around about verse 38 of chapter 4. And, and, and the, the prophets, school, uh, they, they need something to eat. Yeah. And so you, you know how it is. And many of you who, who are over 50, y'all know how it is. My mama would grab stuff and put it together. She put some everything in it. You didn't really know what it was. But, but it tastes good. And, and you and it was still here. And, amen. And, amen. And, and so the, the, the text says that they goes out, some of the, some of the uh, students goes out uh, to collect uh, what they can to make a stew. Uh, and, and one young man grabs some paws of uh, gold and he pours when he gets back, he, everything he had in his, in, his, in his lap, he just dumped it over in the stew. Yeah. Uh, but the tasters of the stew realized that it was paused. Uh, and Elijah, uh, Elijah said, go, go get some flour, go get some meal. And they brought it to him and he pours it in the stew. Uh, and it killed the paws in the stew. Now notice what Elijah did. He didn't say pour it out. He, he didn't say dump that. He said, let's, let's make it work. The Elijah uh, was a great economist, just like Jesus. Je Jesus was a great economist. He didn't waste it. He didn't waste words. He didn't waste anything. Yeah, yeah. And Elijah uh, was able to heal the stew. I mean, he was able to bring the paws out of the stew. And they ate. That's, chapter, that's verse 38 through 41. But then he, here in verse 42, where we see Elijah uh, is confronted with another overwhelming task. All right. School of the prophet there, about a hundred of them there. And here comes a man uh, who has an offering to bring. Uh, the Bible uh, said it was the first, first fruit. And the first fruit was normally given to the priest. But since there were no priests around. He gives it to the man of God. Now notice, notice, the servant could have been thinking, me and, me and the prophet, we're going to eat good. All right. I, 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 I've, got, I've got 20 loaves. I've got 20 loaves of barley bread here and, and some corn. I mean, it's not half, it's four years of corn. Boy, we're gonna we're gonna have us a feast. But he brings it to Elisha. And Elisha tells him to give it to the men yeah. that they may eat. The servant said, now listen, now listen, 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 preacher. I, I didn't I didn't really bring this. I didn't really give this to you so you could. Give it away. I brought it to you because I thought I was going to get some of what I brought to you. But Elisha tells him again to give it to the people. Simple, simple order. But then there's simple obedience. When we 
obey what the Lord tells us to do? Could it be you overwhelmed with life and life perplexities? Because you, number one, you can't follow simple orders. And you compound that by not being able to follow simple obedience. The servant obeys Elisha. Yeah, yeah. He obeys Elisha. Yeah. And the Bible talks about obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Here we see Elisha telling this servant to let's feed these people. They are hungry. Yeah, yeah. But don't, don't you see the comparison in Mark chapter 6, John chapter 6, when Jesus fed the five thousand? Yeah, yeah. The disciple was wondering, how are we going to feed so many yeah. with so little? All right. God does some of his best work yeah. when the numbers are small. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Many of us know how God works when the number was small. We had small numbers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You don't even have to look at your bank account to know it's small. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. You got small numbers. But in spite of the small numbers, God keeps doing large things in our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're here today because God keeps doing large things in our, in our lives. Yeah. And that's the whole thrust of the text. Work with what you got. Yeah, yeah. Seems to me that Elijah is telling his servant, work with what you got. Yeah. Have a lot of witness here. Yeah. When we learn not to compete and complain, yeah, yeah. but just continue in what the Lord has told us to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have to learn how not to grumble. We got to get away from grumbling and replace grumbling with gratitude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have a lot of witness here. Yeah. If we're going to shift from being overweight to overflowing, we've got to learn how, number one, to follow simple orders. But then we got to move from following through simple orders to moving to simple obedience. If the Lord says do it, then just do it. Don't, don't, don't try to contemplate why you should do it. But don't contemplate where you should do it and when you should do it. Just contemplate on doing what the Lord has told you to do. Have a lot of witness here. Many things don't work out because uh, we don't and then we don't follow simple obedience. Many of us are overwhelmed because we try to do it our way. Have a lot of witness here. We, we, we try to I think God. We try to I measure God. We, we try to have more sense than God, more, more intelligence than God. And God is saying, I'm the one that put brains in you. I'm the one that allows you to have a brain to think with. Here. And so we have to learn how to give God uh, what belongs uh, to him. Elijah, he has said, uh, give it uh, to the men to eat. Yeah, 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 but he, yeah. he said it's a hundred of them. How, how can 20 small barley loaves uh, of bread feed a uh, hundred men? Yeah, yeah. Elijah said, I've already talked with God. Yeah. And God told me to tell you that not only if you feed me, you're going to have a Uh, that are left over 
in Mark chapter 6, you didn't think you were going to have enough to feed the 5,000. But because of your doubt and faith, I'm going to give each one of you a basket of fragments. That's a reminder that God can do anything but fail.
to bring you. He'll bring you. He'll bring you Shifting from being
recommend the Bill of Rest Baptist Church, wow. Friend Church, Bible Center Church, yeah. Yeah. People Center Church, yeah. Praise Center Church. Amen. So we invite you to come. You know, when people with us, we have other churches we can recommend you to. More than that, we show you around if you're new to the city. Yes, Lord. And you witness me. 
a civil act. Amen. Amen. So we can do, we can do more. Amen. We just continue to be faithful uh, to the vision that God has given me to give to, to you. Amen. Wow. So let's make sure uh, if you have not uh, sent your impact offering, it's only $20 a month and it places all the annual days celebration and all that. So just $20 uh, a month. Amen. $20 a month is less than a dollar a day. Amen. 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 That's less than a dollar a day. Amen. Amen. So let's, let's do that. And then let's not forget God's tithes. Amen. Amen. Wow. And then including God's tithes is pastors. Pastoral support. Amen. 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 Simple laws. Simple laws. Simple, simple laws. Amen. To give to the men of God is just like you support God's work. God's representative. Amen. So pray even now that you prepare for your giving. You will start with God first. Amen. You should give him his tithes and his offering. As we get ready to leave this place. Amen. Thank God for uh, our media booth. Thank God for our media booth. Let me just take that time. Amen. Let me just say this. It's well, it's, it's well overdue. While many of you were at home, um, it was this crew um, that was allowing us to bring the sanctuary to our homes. So let me just thank me.